Welcome back. And so now that we've allowed the test tubes to rest for 10 minutes at least for all the precipitate to fall to the bottom, the question is what do we have left over that's not reacted for reagents? Okay, we call that uh, liquid on the top that has the remaining uh, reactant. We call that a supernatant. And so what we're going to do is very carefully draw up some of that supernatant and then the question is do we have barium or do we have iodate in that supernatant so what we're going to do is we're going to add three drops one two three one two three into well A three drops into well B one two three One, two, three, one, two, three, D, one, two, three, one, two, three, and lastly E, one, two, three, one, two, and three, okay. Now the question is, do I have leftover barium or do I have leftover iodate? So what we're going to use to figure out if it's bar leftover barium is a solution of sodium sulfate. To that we're going to add three drops. This is our, my barium indicator. Now let's go and we have a solution of so sodium bisulfate with a combination of starch in there. We're going to add five drops to that one and this is going to serve as my iodate indicator. Five drops to each of those wells. Just one more drop. Okay. Now you'll notice right away, I'm going to remove this paper for a moment. You'll notice right away we've got some results. Okay. And so we see in the remaining wells that the first one turned purple. Okay. The other ones were clear. Down at the bottom, okay, down in this first column, we see that this one was clear. And in there, these turned white. Okay, this one wasn't very white, but it is white and it's definitely not purple there. So the question is, what does this tell us? Remember, this is the call, the row that indicates for iodate. Okay, so the question is, which test tube contained leftover or what we call excess iodate? This is the row that indicates leftover or excess barium. So if we go back to our labs, what we're trying to figure out is this column. When we had, for example, I'm looking at stage three here, when we had nine of this and one of this, what did we have left over? The results you're looking at right now are from stage one. When we had one milliliter of barium and three milliliters of iodate, what did we have left over? What did we have excess? The thing that, the other reactant is what we refer to as our limiting reagent. Okay, then we're going to be taking a look at the results um, from all three stages. Like I said, we just tested stage one. I'll show you a picture in just a moment about stage two. And what we had for our experiment there was keeping our barium constant and our iodate was the variable. Okay, so that's what we've got in trial two. In trial three, okay, so you'll notice I will have this set up. In trial three, we are actually adjusting both of these, okay? So we have two variables in 
stage three or part three or trial three, however you want to refer to them. We start with nine milliliters of barium and work our way down to one. So we start high with barium, we start low with our iodate, and we're gonna see an intersecting point. So we have two variables in trial three. And so we have a high amount of barium with a low amount of iodate. We gradually reduce this and gradually increase these, ending up in test tube E with a low amount of barium and a high amount of iodate. I'll give you a picture. It's the same procedure we did this. I'll load up the other wells and I'll get you a picture of that and then we'll run through how to do the math to adjust and figure out how much precipitate was actually formed and the grand reveal of all of this is how much excess remains. If we say we have excess of this left over, the question is how much too much did we add? Okay, how much excess remains after the reaction?